to some news. I want to try to keep you informed of what's going on in the underworld. So we've got Vito Guso. Uh, he would like he's in prison, and he'd like the government to give him a compassionate release under the well-meaning First Step Act. Which is a good law. Uh, President uh, Trump put it into play. Guzzo describes himself in a court filing as, quote, a completely rehabilitated man, someone who has, quote, matured from a rash young man pursuing a late lawless lifestyle to a reflective, empathetic, middle-aged adult. He's 57. I'm 67. For me, he's a kid. But anyway, uh, you know, I'll take him at his word. I mean, if he says he's rehabilitated, I'm just glad the prison system's doing what's If you want to get a really intelligent, not, not from me, but... A, you know, an actual intelligent uh, rundown on this whole thing. I found this YouTube channel, <clears throat> excuse me, called, it's all one word, get a pen, write this down, Sit Down News, Sit, S-I-T, Down, D-O-W-N, News, Sit Down News, all one word. There's two N's in the news, so you put S-I-T, D-O-N, uh, then N-E-S. And it's by a guy named John Panisi, who I, well, I hope I'm getting this right, I'm going to, Accuse him of having been a member of the Casey crime family. John, if I'm not right, I'm sorry, pal. Uh, but, you know, at worst, people think you're a mobster. Don't worry about it. So anyway, go there, and you'll get a complete rundown on what the First Step Act is. And, and uh, apparently, this John Panacey knew these guys, uh, or he knew his brother, I guess, and he knew him well. So there you can get something intelligent. Here, I'm just going to give you a rundown. Anyway, back to Vito. Vito says that he suffers from pain of being shot on two separate occasions, 1990 1996, which left him with a loss of sight in one eye and the removal of part of his lung. Jeez. Guzzo survived 11 gunshot wounds from two attempts on his life. Imagine that, 11. The Justice Department was not happy about this, so they let it be known that, in their opinion, Guzzo is an ultra-violent man uh, who was inducted into the Colombo crime family in the past decade while he was caged in a federal prison. So that's not going to help, I'm, I'm guessing. But Guzzo Jr., he's the son of a mob loan shark, Colombo soldier, union official, named in an ex-con, Vito Guzzo Sr. Jr. came to the city's attention in 1994 when he was 29 years old. I think he was actually younger than that. And he was associated with the Colombo crime family in Howard Beach, Queens, and was mentioned as a potential up-and-coming replacement it was said in broad terms, sort of tongue-in-cheek, uh, for a replacement for John Gotti. In other words, they were simply saying, if there's going to be another John Gotti, it would come out of somebody like this guy, Guzzo. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to be the next John Gotti. When they said that, John Gotti was in Marion Prison. He was let out of his cell one hour a day. So I don't think I want to be John But by then, Guzzo had a, a cumulative arrest in 1984, from the Manhattan District Attorney, a grand jury was investigating loan sharking, and Guzzo had used a baseball bat to beat money out of a debtor. So Guzzo was summoned before the committee. He refused to go. He was arrested. When the grand jury offered him immunity, he refused. Uh, that made him an instant hit in bad guy circles. In that case, by the way, a policeman named Detective Dominic Razzano went to Guzzo's home, the father's home, at 63-4978 Street, Middle Village, to lock up the boy, Guzzo, uh, for not answering a subpoena. And when the father answered the door, Vito Guzzo, he rushed the cop, and uh, the cop was on a stair. He knocked him down on the lawn, and he screamed off for and he punched him in the face, and he screamed off for his son to beat it, make a run for it. By that time, Rosino uh, and his partner were able to subdue the father, but the son had disappeared. Senior, senior was charged with assault, as well he should have been, when resisting arrest, and obstructing justice, uh, the administration of justice, he refused to be fingerprinted. So in 1987, Vito Guzzo Sr. went on a hunting trip with Vincent Three Fingers Ricardo. I'm not a Rhodes Scholar. I don't think I would go anywhere with anybody named Three Fingers. But he went. So after his death, he didn't come back. Surprise, surprise. A Colombo member, Dennis Guzardo, sort of became a surrogate father to the young Guzzo. And he said, look, don't strike out at this guy. We know he killed your father. Don't, blah, blah, blah. It's good advice. Uh, later on, by the way, it was learned that Guzzo was an FBI informant. But in this case, he did good work. He 
tried to save a young man from doing something stupid. But when Guzzuto died, November 1, 1993, 92 rather, I'm sorry, there was nothing holding uh, Guzzo back. The following night, around 7 p.m., in a pouring rain, he struck out. Uh, that night, a bunch of stolen cars he had gotten together with some guys in a U-Haul van cut off the Lincoln Town car in Maspeth, uh, Maspeth, and that where Ricardo was in the car, in the town car. They cut him off, they boxed him in. They all leaped out of their various cars wearing Halloween masks, monster masks. And uh, in the rain, they just flooded the car with uh, a barrage of shotguns and pistols. Uh, and they tore the Lincoln apart. Ricardo and Paul Shivira were wounded. A third guy, Anthony Misa, was killed. Uh, where they were going, oddly enough, was to Gazzuto's wake. Um, wow. So that was followed up with another arrest for beating a guy in a middle village bar called Nettles in 1993. The guy wanted Guzzo arrested. He went to the cops. They said, well, it's Guzzo. You realize that, don't you? And then when the guy found out who Guzzo was, he changed his mind. Uh, smart move. In 1992, in a drug deal gone wrong, Guzzo killed a man named Ralph Campiani Scuglia uh, with a shot in the head. Scuglia, he, he, he was part of the gang but he had gone off on his own. He was doing drugs, selling drugs on his own, which nobody would normally care about, but he was selling it to customers the gang had established. So uh, they found him, his partially decomposed body, in the trunk of a Mercedes-Benz in Jericho. What a waste of a Mercedes-Benz. A uh, postal worker smelled the, the foul odor. Anyway, police suspected that Guzzo was part of hiding this guy named Patrick Bannon. For six weeks. Bannon uh, killed two men, including a policeman, uh, and allegedly wounded another man uh, on July 18, 1992. In 1996, by the way, Bannon eventually got, I put his picture up here for you, he got life. Uh, in 1996, Guzzo was shot six times. Prior to that, in the 1980s, in a different dispute, he got shot five times while he sat in his car. I think it was actually in the 1990s when he got shot the other time. The investigator said, but in 1995, Guzzo was a leader of this gang of would-be wise guys who basically were just selling drugs, robbing stuff in their own neighborhood, mind you. So one job they pulled off was an arson for hire. In that case, this woman named Sandra Sanchez paid Guzzo and his crew to burn down her hair salon. Uh, and then insurance investigators, who are very, very bright guys, by the way, uh, I used to be one. And they determined that the fire was sloppy. It was just, it was an insurance fraud thing. Sanchez fled the country. Last I heard, they had a warrant to bring her back. She went to Spain. In 1996, shooting, in that shooting, uh, they got Guzzo, he's walking to Gold's Gym in Rigo Park. Uh, I've been to Rigo Park. They have an Irish thing there every year. It's huge. It's like a uh, Woodstock for Irish people. No one's sober. It's fun. Anyway, he got, they shot him, he got hit in the neck, the chest, the face, the belly. Somehow, amazingly, he staggered across a very busy boulevard and he collapsed in front of St. John Cemetery. I thought that was, you know, interesting because here's who's buried there, Frank, uh, St. John's. Frank Dasher, Abadondo, Lucky Luciano, John Gotti, Gambino, Joe Colombo, Salvatore Di Aquila, Anthony Della Croce, Roy DeMeo. Johnny Dio, Carmen Fratico, Johnny Francis, Sonny Francis, Carmen Galante, Vito Genovese, Vanny Higgins, he was a bootlegger. Willie Boy Johnson, I think John Gotti killed him. Carmen Lampardoza, I didn't pronounce that right. Salvatore Maranzano, wow. Mick Miranda, Mike Miranda, actually, James Napoli, Vincent Papa, Joe Profacci, Phil Restelli, and Frank Terry. They're all buried there, wow. So at the hospital, they, they're going to try to save his life, and Guzzo apparently told the nurse, can you cut me up in a different place than you cut me the last time because I don't want a whole new set of scars. I could see that. I've got some, <laughs> well, I've had my knees and everything else replaced. You should see me. I mean, I look like I was in an explosion. So in 1997, Guzzo is accused of being involved in the murder of these two guys, John Ruscio and Stephen Pagnosi. Uh, they were murdered in, of course, a drug dispute. Uh, witnesses said that Ruzio and Pagnosi were placed on their knees. This is in a Queen social club, and they begged for their lives. Guzzo fired a shot, first shot he hit, 
one of the guys in the forehead killed him. Anthony Tabita was killed, uh, killed the other man. So at the time, Tabita was on the run from the FBI on robbery charges. So when they finished, they rolled these guys in a rug, put them in a Nissan Pathfinder, uh, set it on fire in Brooklyn and took off. I noticed, by the way, I don't know if there's may not be any relation. It was a guy named Anthony Tabita who was a New York City policeman who was on the take for some pimps. He was offering protection for the pimps. and It's the whole thing. I don't know if it's the same person, but it's an interesting, it's an unusual name. That's why. Guzzo was also named in the October 9, 1996 murder of John Johnny Boy Borello. Borello. Um, pause here. I used to go to a place called Borello's Bar in Waterbury, Connecticut. He was this little short dark Italian guy who was a big political power in that town. Uh, he was so big that when President Kennedy came there, and Bobby Kennedy came there, they stopped by Borello's Bar and had a pizza and a beer. Okay, back to the story. So once again, Tabita is part of this murder. So Borello was a low-level car thief, kind of worked with the mob off and on. And he made the horrible mistake of dating Lisa Sellers, who had been Gusso's girlfriend for two years, I guess, dumped him. What the, they cut him down with 20 shots after he dropped her off at her house after a date. He was a kid when they murdered him. Uh, incredible. So in 1998, Guzzo, finally the law catches up to him. They're, they're going to throw the kitchen sink at him. He's facing a possible death sentence. This is a federal case now. So you have to plead guilty to a 38-year sentence. If you go back to that... Uh, website I told you about, Sit Down News, I've lost it, uh, Sit Down News on YouTube. He gives a really good explanation of the, how he got charged, what happened to the charges and all that stuff, and it's just fairly intelligent. I, um, I'm just giving you a quick rundown here uh, about what happened. But anyway, he took the plea, 38 years, uh, he admitted to five murders as part of that plea. 25 other guys who were part of his gang also pleaded guilty in that case. There's one more item about the family Guzia. Uh, FBI agent Jack Garcia. If you come on my channel, there's an interview here with me and Jack. Uh, he's a really, really nice man. I really hope you'd watch that. And he, he wrote a great book, by the way. So anyway, he infiltrated the Gambino crime family. He was posing as Jack Falcone, this high-end mafia-based guy. Jack is a Cuban-American. Uh, he was posing as this Miami hood who could move stolen goods with a crew of Cuban guys he had and all that. And um, they bought it, hook, line, and sinker. So when the Gambinos find out, found out that Falcone was really an FBI guy, they were pissed. They put up, apparently, no one knows if this is true or not, a $250,000 contract to murder Falcone. The feds found out because Guzzo's brother, Anthony, stupidly mentioned it while he was in Austin prison. Austin used to be Sing Sing. Ossining is the town where um, Sing Sing is. And he, so he boasted that he accepted the contract from embarrassed mob bosses to, quote, get that motherfucker Falcone. Oh, don't call him that. And a couple of other witnesses. So Jack Falcone, by the way, I know him. He's, he's a good father and a good husband. Just thought I'd throw that in. The FBI went there. They confronted Guzzo in prison. He denied it. He said, I don't know what you're talking about. And he offered to take a lie detector test, which he took, and then he failed. He, uh, Anthony Guzzo was released from prison after serving a 10-year stretch. And he's jailed again in 2002 for another five years after he had an argument with a woman uh, who owned a bar in Long Island, and he cut her throat. She lived, apparently. But um, on that podcast, it's a sit-down mafia. He makes the case that that probably that story probably isn't true that this guy made it up this guy uh, the brother uh, Guzzo made it up it sounds right to me too